Well, a number of major decisions from the U.S. Supreme Court this week. What do they mean and how will they affect us? Here to talk about that, Professor Mark Graber from the University of Maryland School of Law. Thank you so much for coming in. Good morning and thanks for having me. <laughs> Let's start off a bit with affirmative action. There's a group of uh, students at the University of Texas who went to the Supreme Court about affirmative action. What was the decision on that particular case? The decision was mostly to throw it back to the lower federal courts to find a crucial fact. I think this was largely considered a win for proponents of affirmative action because it's fairly likely the lower courts will find that fact in favor of the University of Texas, namely that Texas did not have a race-neutral alternative if they were seeking to pursue diversity in their classrooms. Is this seen, looked at as a victory for affirmative action o um, outside of Texas? Yes, in large part because a great many people thought the case was going to be the death of affirmative action and simply that affirmative action lives to fight another day is considered a great victory. Okay, let's move on to the Voting Rights Act and President Obama even expressed his disappointment with what the Supreme Court uh, decided. You had a conservative justice who wrote the opinion and then they sort of said let's just kick it back to Congress and let them modernize this act. Well what they said was the formula used for something called preclearance. Preclearance means if you've engaged in race discrimination in the past, you cannot change your laws without permission from Congress. This is a very crucial step mm -hmm. to preserving no race discrimination in voting. They said the formula was outdated even though Congress reviewed the formula in 2006. Mm -hmm. Now if we had a Congress that actually got things done, the formula would be revised in a month or two and things back to normal. This is not a Congress mm -hmm. that moves very quickly. It's unclear whether we'll see a revised formula. Because we were, it's very political now. You're talking about a conservative, a number of conservative uh, members of Congress, and a conservative court that are supposed to re, 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 redo this particular bill. It is unlikely anything will come out of Congress, particularly because a lot of different political ox will be gored mm -hmm. and they have their representatives who have veto points mm -hmm. at various points in Congress. So what does this mean for those living in those 15 states in the South? Um, anything could happen? States could do whatever they want? It means a state like Alabama for the time being will be able to make any voting rights change it wants and lots of them are likely to have ill effects for people of color and they'll be very difficult to challenge legally. Not impossible, but difficult. Wow. All right. Um, and what should, what can those, what can people do? What can those states do or those who are against, what can be done to change that? Well, to reverse this? You can try to get Congress to pass a revised formula. You can try and get a fifth justice on the mm -hmm. Supreme Court because Justice Ginsburg and the other three dissenters made it very clear they're ready to reverse the decision. Mm -hmm. They lack the votes. And it was, even though in 2006 it was overwhelmingly reapproved, voted for again by Congress. Well, this is a court that doesn't simply have a Republican majority. It has a very conservative right. Republican majority. So in a number of cases, this court has declared unconstitutional laws passed by bipartisan Republican okay. and Democratic majorities. All right, really quick on same-sex marriage, um, a victory there for, um, for many, uh, and, but it's not likely to be the end of this as we see it in the Supreme Court. No, all the DOMA case holds now is if your state, such as Maryland, recognizes the same-sex marriage, you will get federal benefits as well. It doesn't require any state to recognize same-sex marriage. The California case even said less. It simply said the people who were appealing a decision allowing same-sex marriage in California mm -hmm. didn't have the right to appeal that decision. Maybe somebody else has a right, mm -hmm. but not them. Okay, so we're likely to see more of these more more cases involving same-sex marriage back before this court. Uh, yes, um, this this one isn't over. Okay, uh, Professor Graber, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Okay. Stay with us. Animal Rescue joins us with a pet that's looking for a home.